of software development for machine learning and RISC-V acceler vector accelerators. Um, so three things, software development, machine learning, RISC-V vector accelerators. Now, Empiris, we're a small self-funded company, UK-based with sales in the US and uh, in South Korea, Japan, for the rest of the world. And our focus really is around simulation. Nobody designs a chip without a simulator. And we believe that nobody should be developing embedded software without simulation. And that's our focus, developing tools and simulators, debuggers and models for people to build simulations of their platforms so that they can develop software. Our technology is around simulation with models and tools. And it allows you to put together a platform run it on the simulator and interact with it, just like you would with the hardware, with your debuggers, with your Eclipse, your GDP and stuff like that. And you can develop software in exactly the same way on the virtual platform that you can on the hardware. Now, we have a library of models with some almost 300 processor models in there. We create them, you create them, we provide a lot as open source. You can do the same with the behavioral components and you can put those together in a platform. And we have industry leading simulation performance up to billions of instructions a second. And you can model a single core, multi-core, many core, heterogeneous, homogeneous. Uh, you can, any platform that you, you, you need to build in silicon, we can simulate there. And we can boot very sim simulations run very fast. So we can boot things like Linux very quickly, for example, 15 seconds. Um, we have a, um, a debugger, which allows you to debug software and irrelevant and irrespective of which processor ISO it is, it's completely heterogeneous and advanced tools in there. And even we have the ability to run in the EDA environments to help with the design verification as a golden reference model. Um, a type of a typical example of a platform we build is something like the uh, Freedom um, 540 from uh, Sci-5 boots Linux, quad core processor with a control processor, and it boots up an SMP Linux uh, in under 15 seconds there. So let's move on and talk about machine learning. So. You know, there are many different software suites that people are using and frameworks for machine learning. And many different applications require different types of frameworks. But one of the key things that all of these frameworks is, is use a huge amount of computation. And so you need to, to, be, to design a platform which will run. It won't just run very efficiently on a single processor. So you need to build multiprocessor. And people are trying to explore all these different architecture of hardware that they can put together to run their um, AI frameworks, whether it's a, a scalar processors, whether it's multiple processors, whether it has accelerators, all the way up to the full vector engines, we're seeing all sorts of different uh, architectures of, of, uh, of, of designs there with network on chips for communications and lots of different memory architectures. And so there are different approaches that are needed in there. And you know, we've had experience with several different customers doing this. I'm just going to talk a little about two of them. One of them, the first one here, is not publicly disclosed uh, their, their technology. It's a large chip. They built an inference engine with over a billion transistors on it. And on there, there's more than 150 cores in the SOC. And many have RISC-5 vector engine as an accelerator for, for the machine learning in there. And the simulator runs very fast for the whole software stack running. It's sort of two hours to, to run through, through what they're doing. And it allows them to develop the simulator because it's running so fast, allows them to develop these software stacks. And actually, they had the software up and running a year before they committed to the RTL. And of course, they can then use this simulation, use these models uh, as, as to help with the hardware DB as they're exploring that and reconfigure things and try different architectures out. So simulator is invaluable as a technology in, in building these AI hardware. Here's uh, another example, which I'm going to go through in a little more detail. And this is actually where there's a 16 core, all the vectors in there, and there's a control processor. And um, then there's an ARM as a, as a sort of housekeeping application processor. It's targeting automotive. And this example is an application of the Alexa image recognition deep neural network. And well, it's a very interesting um, uh, uh, piece of software here. And it has billions of um, multipliers and adds in there. So it's a tremendous amount of computation to do to do some inference and, and, and some analysis on there. And the, the interesting thing about it is there's all these different convolution layers it's split up. And the um, East Old Trinity, what they did is they parallelized these layers onto the different cores so they could run different bits of the computation on the different cores and share that. And so, and so they built a platform with multiple risk five cores with the ARM core, some shared memory, some local memory with UART so that you could see what was going on inside the designs there. And now what we're gonna do is have a demonstration of that. So I have a, a script to run the AlexNet 
algorithm. And we can see what it's doing is just running the, the virtual platform from the library. Um, it's specifying uh, the root of uh, a non-standard library with the custom components in it. And then it's got some loading of applications. So it loads application onto the ARM process and it loads application onto the array of the RISC-V uh, processes. So we start off by running the AlexNet application, virtual platform. I've enabled uh, three of the uh, UARTs from the, the simulation. We've got the, uh, let's start at the left here, we've got this is the UART connected to the ARM application process. So this is defining which of the binary images is the input. We've got the uh, one uh, RISC V that's doing the, the management of the array. And then th this is one of the uh, array processes. So just showing you what, what's doing, what it's doing at the time. What I've also got here is a little uh, frame buffer graphics output, which shows the input image that's currently being processed. You know, it's the strange colors. That's good. The, the input is a, a floating 16-point RGB image, but the uh, data values are normalized on the input. And you see here, well, this is the Fujisan uh, volcano in Japan. And you can see that it's been processed and the recognition has come out on top as a volcano uh, with other lower possibilities being shown. So you can see that we're processing images uh, fairly quickly, you know, pre pre real time, um, and that we have all information available to us of what's, what's happening. Much more detail in the analysis and look at each of the cores uh, actual utilization, so the instructions being executed. Um, and again, you can see that we've got the, the 16 array processes, and they're varying between 100% utilized and then uh, drop, dropping off in between uh, the processing. And then towards the bottom here, we've got the um, management processor, and you can see that this is active for a short periods of time um, during the processing. So that's the, uh, an example, a demonstration or a platform put together by one of our partners. And one of the things they said is they really like the fact that the simulator could simulate heterogeneous in your arm as well as RISC V in there as well. They like the fact that there was this sort of heterogeneous debugger, so you could debug software running on the arm as well as on RISC V at the same time. And it, obviously, it was very fast in there. So now let's just uh, talk about RISC-V vector accelerators. Now, one of the key things about machine learning is it requires very good uh, uh, engine to run on. You need a really good model as well of that engine. And if you're going to use a RISC-V vector model, then you know, the MPS has a very good simulation of that. And one of the key things is it's very configurable, runs very fast, and uses very little memory so that you can simulate very large systems. And in terms of the vectors, there's lots of different configuration options. Like here, for example, you know, the vector specification, which version is your silicon that you're going to be uh, implementing going to be, and what sort of configurations, how wide is it up in terms of vector length and things like that. And the simulator allows you to do that. And the current status of the software is that the specification, RISC-V uh, vector specification is almost complete. Um, it's uh, expected to be ratified this month or next month. And there are tools on the way for GCC and LLVM in there. And there's people working on intrinsic, so you can run vector instructions from within C programs and also vectorizing compilers are coming. And obviously we provide debug, which allows you to do debug and analysis of the vectors as they're running. And one of the key things that we see is that tests are very important. And we have a test generator that generates tests. You can see at the bottom, one of the suites for specific configuration of a vector engine has some almost uh, 5,000 different tests in there for architectural uh, 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 compatibility checking. And so in summary, you know, Create a virtual platform way before you've got RTL, configure it as the specifications change. You can get software development up and running, you know, months or a year before uh, hardware, and you can get significant productivity gains. And of course, your simulation and your continuous integration flows. We've been also working with the leaders in this space, for example, Andes with their um, 27V vector engine, there that they, they, they license to customers, and also with Sci5. We've been collaborating, and we have models of all of their cores as well. So. Thank you very much for listening. For more information, send us an email or come to one of the websites to um, get more information. So thank you very much for that. I guess that was my time slot. So um, we'll go on to the next presentation. Yeah.
Um, while we are switching screens, you're welcome to address any of the questions that appeared or that were not answered in the chat. Um, and the recording will be available um, as well as all of the presentation slides and all of the video presentations from this afternoon. Gosh, I can see no, no questions for me directly there. Um, Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you all so much. We'll speak with you again very shortly.